Okay, so when we do the calculation of earnings per share, uh, because of the nature of asking questions in the class and trying to simplify things, things down uh, to reduce complexity, you're asking about uh, one of three things. We're either asking about calculate the earnings per share or give me the numerator or the denominator. There's, all, there's only three parts to this. You get the numerator, the denominator, and then the earnings per share. And so sometimes questions ask, okay, would you know how to answer Give me the answer for the denominator, which is weighted average shares outstanding. Sometimes questions say, hey, do you know what's the total earnings that should be included in your earnings per share? And uh, that would be a question about the numerator. Do you know the numerator that's supposed to go in your EPS calculation? And then sometimes the questions are, can you just calculate the share? This example goes into the calculation for weighted average shares outstanding. Now, when we go through this initially, your mind's going to say, oh, this looks like it's too much really kind of intuitive. So assume the following, uh, a company, uh, Ken Dog, had 10, uh, had net income of 2,500,000 for the year and paid 200,000 of preferred dividends. There's those preferred dividends. Do we include those in earnings or not? We'll get into it. Um, and then they had shares outstanding on the 1st of January, 20, uh, you know, some year. And it's, this, we're all going to assume this is in the same year. I put X is there, so this uh, problem doesn't age over time. Uh, so one million of uh, shares outstanding with uh, in in the at the start of the year January first, and then two hundred shares outstanding issued on April first, and then one thousand shares purchased on October first, and then one point one million shares outstanding on the thirty first of December. Okay, so we have a lot of different shares outstanding at a lot of different times. We need to figure out okay, well, what's the weighted average number of these shares? And what we're trying to get at here is that the shareholders are not there for the whole year, but the earnings, the, the, what we use for our earnings per share is there for the year. When you report net income, it's January to December. But you don't want to give January to December, you don't want to give everybody credit for being at the table the whole time if they showed up late to dinner or if they left, or if they left early from dinner. They didn't get to excuse. They're not there the whole time. So we have to find out what the earnings is going to be for everyone showing up and everyone leaving and, and factor that in. That We're kind of getting a weighted average of the time that is there, and we're representing that as the number of shares, the weighted average number of shares outstanding over the entire time period. This right here, this was their net income, and then they paid 200000 of it in preferred dividends. Okay, their preferred dividends. That means common shareholders aren't getting them. We have to net these out. So the two, two, 2.5 million gets netted by 200,000 right here. And when we net this by 200,000, we're going to get two, three. So that is what's going to go in our numerator, right? So is that the weighted average shares that stand? No, that's going to help us with our basic EPS. That's going to go in our numerator. All right, so we have 100,000 share. We have 1 million shares outstanding January 1st, and we end up with 1.1 million shares outstanding on uh, the 31st of December. And so what we're doing is, and I'll represent this in kind of like a timeline, forgive me for my bad writing here, but imagine this is the year, and this is December, and this is the 1st of January. Okay, and then we have our different points in the year. We're, we have different quarters, and I've, the problem's made a little bit easier because this is at the start of Q2, all right? So for all the way through the three months of January, February, and March, three out of 12 months, we have how many outstanding? We have 1 million shares outstanding. That's two Ms, 1 million share outstanding, right? And then what happens April 1st? April 1st, we have not 1 million, but we have 1.2 million uh, shares outstanding. And how long do we have them outstanding for? All the way from April 1st, all the way through June, July, and all the way to October, October 1st, right? So it's all the way to October 1st. So how long is this 1.2 million outstanding? Well, it's outstanding six out of 12 months. Isn't that so nice that it's like all on even dates? It wasn't on this quarterly date. We just take whatever 
how many days it is into the year and divide it by 365. But because we're dealing with months here, we can use the six months over 12. So the six over 12, we take the 1.2 million times the six over 12, and that gets us what our weighted average would be for this section of the year. And then at the end of the year, we have 1.1 million shares outstanding times times uh, how many months are left? Three out of 12. It's always good to just check. You got three plus six plus three equals 12. So we have a full year's worth of time here. And we have the different time periods where there is a different amount of shares outstanding. And what we're going to do is we're going to take each of these time periods, figure out how many shares uh, on of the year they were outstanding for, and then we're going to add them all together. And that's what I've done in this next slide here. We take the 1 million times the 3 over 12, January, February, March, 1.2 uh, times the the six over the twelve, from April to uh, the start of October, and then uh, and then uh, it, and and it's important to know that that's the start of October in the present, so it's six months there, and then it's one point one uh, three uh, for the three months October, November, December. Okay, so and the total, if you do this, you get a total weighted shares outstanding. If you do this calculation, you get a total weighted average number of shares outstanding here of one point one two five million shares. That's the denominator. That's the denominator in our basic EPS. So when we do basic EPS, we have to do net income minus preferred dividends over weighted average shares. So we figured out this. And one of the biggest problems students have is that they're like, oh, EPS, oh, I know what I'm doing. Weighted average shares, one, two, three, I got all four numbers. What's the weighted average shares outstanding? Boom, I put that there. And they think they're done with the problem. Not done with the problem. Moreover, they, they spend so too much time thinking about it and going through it, they forget there's preferred dividends. They think they're common dividends, so they'll forget the preferred dividends that we used in the, that we figured out earlier. But you have to remember, it's net income less preferred dividends divided by the weighted average shares outstanding. If we do that, we get an earnings per share, basic earnings per share of 2.04. This is the basic earnings per share. Isn't that neat? So that's how you calculate the weighted average number of shares outstanding. In this example, look forward to some more examples. It increases in complexity.